Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Spruce Society, for having me today as a um, presenter on discovering ageless beauty with Young Living. This is my notes for today, and I'm going to stay on track. And I will answer all questions at the end. I'll have a little Q&A time, and then um, you can also personally message me, or of course, drop questions in the comments that I'll get to afterwards. So number one, great skin tip is drink a lot of water, a lot of clean water, pure water. They say half your body weight in ounces per day is about what you need to be drinking. So please make sure you have some water, paper and pen. And I've got, there's a lot, a lot here. So, all right. I am Serena Garrett. I'm from Maui, Hawaii. I've been with Young Living for five years, just over five years. And I did not always look this good. I look better now, postmenopausal at 50 years old, after everything that I've been through, which is a very long story I won't go into. <clears throat> I look better now than I ever have in my life. And I attribute it not just to my skincare regimen, but to the entire lifestyle of uh, wellness that is promoted and provided, promoted by and provided for through Young Living, um, being able to swap out all of the toxic stuff that I, uh, almost all, obviously I dye my hair blue, people. Um, we have a 90-10 or an 80-20 relationship here, but all of my products that I clean my body with, use on my skin, everything else, all Young Living, and has been for five years, and I've never been happier. Wasted a lot of money in a lot of other places looking for what Young Living has to offer us. So I'm here to share um, all my tips. People ask me all the time, why are you glowing? Why do you look that good? Why whatever? And, you know, we all have different genes. Some of us start off with better skin than others. But the truth is, like, our skin is our most expressive organ. Um, and it tells you what's going on with your gut. It tells you what's going on with your health. And um, there's a lot of things you can do to improve the glow of your skin. So I have a whole bunch of uh, wonderful tips for you here. And um, I do want to give my um, love and appreciation to my uh, mentor and enroller, Dr. Pat McLean, um, who recently passed this year. Um, I would not know any of this if it wasn't for her uh, bringing me in five years ago and saying, you need to get yourself clean so you don't get that horrible disease back. Um, and that's what I'm doing. So without further ado, we're going to talk about first non-product related things to eliminate and reduce. So... <clears throat> Bad oils. If you're eating food that has bad oils in it, trans fats, fried chicken that you didn't make at home with whatever clean oil that you might have made it at home with, um, these things need to go into your 10% or your 20 if you're aiming for like an 80-20 lifestyle. Um, I'm just going to assume you're here because you want these information. So I'm, there's no shame in any of this. I'm not shaming myself. I'm not shaming you for your practices. I'm sharing with you what I've learned is going to help get your skin looking like this. I'm not using a filter. I did put on some Savvy Minerals eyeshadow and some of my Mermaid Magic uh, eco-friendly glitter. I did do my eyebrows, and I'm obviously wearing lipstick. But I have no foundation on. This is my real skin. Um, yeah. All right. Bad oils got to go. Bad oils are just going to clog up every system in your body and then clog up your your pores as well as it's trying to express. I know you love Pat. I know you. Thank you for saying that. Alcohol. Alcohol ain't no good for our body. Not at all, really. Um, I used to believe that a glass of wine a day was a good thing, but thank you, Kelly. So glad you're here. Um, it isn't for my body, and I don't think it is for most people. It is inflammatory. It is sugar, and anything that is sugar is bad for your skin. Period. We can him and haw around it, and we can have our allotted amounts of sugar because we are human, and we want that, and it's okay. And we have to take into consideration that if we want our skin to look better and better and better, then we need to look at, if we're getting acne breakouts and we're getting skin rashes, we have to look at, like, what are we eating? That's the very first thing you have to look at is what are you actually, like, food-wise putting in your mouth. So um, cutting out alcohol sugar, or down, sugar, especially white refined sugars, non-organic dairy, um, additives, food with preservatives, additives, colorants, um, artificial flavors and sugars, none of that is good for any part of your body, and thus it's not good for your skin. Um, smoke and toxin exposure also tends to age your skin faster, so 
By that I mean, um, like I haven't seen research on cannabis smoke, but I know that cigarette smoke will um, definitely age your skin. Um, there's also lots of toxins in most cigarettes. Uh, most people don't grow their own tobacco and roll it and then smoke that. Mostly people are smoking cigarettes that have tobacco and poison chemicals in them, and that's aging, and the smoke itself actually can also age your skin. Um, stress, which you can control to some extent, but not to some extent, is also... Um, if you can reduce your stress levels, that will help your skin. <laughs> um, picking, harsh washing and scrubbing and harsh treatments are not good for your skin. So that's like a super physical thing. Like if you're constantly like, oh, I've got to, you know, do this or I've got to uh, doing all of that is going to traumatize your skin and it's not going to help you get that overall glow that you're looking for. So those are things that have nothing to do with products that you can change in your life or begin to change in your life that will help your skin to be more clear and to glow more. So non-product related things to include and increase. Okay, so we just talked about things to let go of and things to do less of. Now we're going to talk about things to increase. Okay, we want to increase your organic intake. So the more organic foods that you can eat, the better off your body is going to work. Because the pesticides that are on conventional produce and that are in the conventional meats and the additives that are put into all that kind of stuff is um, really bad for you, us, really bad for all of us. It's not good for anybody. So the more of it you can do, um, the better it is going to be from the inside out. That's really your skin. We could put all the creams in the world on your skin, but if you're putting stuff, a bunch of junk inside your body and not cleansing it out, you're going to wind up with skin issues. It's not going to be a clear, glowy skin if you're eating food that isn't um, clean. So going organic as much as possible. Drinking clean water. Don't drink the tap water. Make the effort. Try to get away from plastic bottles. Uh, those have lots of xenoestrogens in them. Um, I'm not even sure that I'm comfortable with the ones that say BPA free, but you know, sometimes you got to have a bottle of water. But everything that you can do to um, change your habits around drinking out of plastic um, will also help you. Clean air. Um, run your diffusers. You know, get that crap out of your air. Excuse me. Um, sorry. Um, that will be the worst thing that I say on this video, I promise. Um, to get that stuff out of the air by diffusing. You want germs out of the air. So, um, okay. Now, another thing that's really helpful is towel and pillow hygiene. Okay. No shame here, but if you're not changing your towels often and you're washing your face and then drying your towel drying your face with the same towel that you just like dried your bottom side with or that you, you know what I'm saying, you need your own towel and you need a new towel each time, even if it's just a small, get a set of washcloths and make sure to clean them in your thieves detergent really well first and then use those as your face drying towels, like treat your face like you're a queen, you are a queen, you are a goddess or you are a king or you are whatever royalty you are and you are going to treat your face like the beautiful gem that it is, and it has its own towel now, okay? And we want to not use that towel except for the one day. This is going to cut down on breakouts. It's going to cut down on a whole bunch of stuff. So you've just cleaned your face. That way you're not putting a bunch of bacteria back more in your face or mold or anything. Same with your pillow. I'm not going to say that I change my pillow every night. I change it like once a week, twice a week. But if you have skin issues, you need to make sure that your pillow is clean. Um... And from your own self, even, um, especially if you have like, uh, you know, oily skin or something, or if you're wearing a lot of makeup and you're not washing it off, like that's going to be all over your pillow. And then you're going to put your clean face on there at night and then you're sleeping all that stuff. Or like for me, like I do let my dog sleep in my bed, but I try to keep her off my pillows. I don't want to sleep on her stuff from her fur and all those oils and everything. I don't want that on my face. Um, so I really suggest pillow hygiene and towel hygiene as a way to also, for free, as a way to um, work on cleaning up your, your skin situation. Um, gua sha therapy with, um, with oils is also really nice. And that's like the art of, I forgot my gua sha stone, it's in the other room, but they're pretty uh, sweet. You can pick them up for less than $10 at like Ross, or you can order one on Amazon. And they're like these pieces of natural stone and you just, you're, it's like a lymph thing for your face and you just are doing this and you're doing this and it's like very calming and it's also very like stress relieving and you do it with I like to use the Mira cleansing oil that's one of my favorite products for me on living I'm going to talk about it again in a little while but the Mira M-I-R-A-H cleansing cleansing oil is what I like to use for the gua sha and you can also use um, whatever moisturizer you're going to be using or whatever serum if it's oily enough you can use for gua sha also and that's something you can do every morning 
Again, it's, you know, like a less than a $10 investment for the little gua sha stone. And you can take five minutes every morning to love on this beautiful face of yours. Hi, Sharon. And um, I've just been, oh, yeah, I use it for so many things. Thank you. Yeah, I've just been going over um, non-product related things to eliminate and reduce and non-product related things to include and increase. So make sure you go back after, check, check out what you might have missed there. Um, but now I'm just um, moving on to product related things to eliminate or swap and why they're important, okay? <clears throat> if there are toxins in your soap, laundry soap, personal care items, air fresheners, makeup, and skincare items, you're aging your face faster. It's that simple. Just like I was saying, if you're eating toxins and you're eating um, impurities, then your skin is going to express that out. Same thing goes for if you're using toxic sunscreens, you're using toxic stuff, it's going to get expressed through your skin, right? If you're inhaling air fresheners that are not pure, if you're wearing synthetic fragrances or, or even using a lot of, you know, a lot of people using shampoos that have synthetic fragrance, like I can't stand synthetic fragrance at all. Um, I do. It is in my hair dye and I have to just really grin and bear those, those moments for my 10% of loving my blue hair. Um, but for the most part, um, get it out. And so swapping these things out is super easy with Young Living, especially with the loyalty program. Laundry soap is a no-brainer. And if you didn't already know this, everything that foams in Young Living is totally dilutable. So the laundry soap makes three laundry soaps. The hand soap makes two hand soaps. The dish soap makes three dish soaps. Like, you can start systematically switching out your stuff. We have so many bundles that make it really easy. Um, and just systematically switch it out. Boom, 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 boom. And it's everything. Um... Product-related things to eliminate and reduce fillers and toxins in your supplements. If you're using supplements from um, other companies, with no, no shame, again, but if you're using other company supplements, do you know what the fillers are? And do you know, like, the, the background of, like, where the, the stuff that went into the supplements came from? Like, is it really, is there junk in there that's going to gunk up your system even more while you're trying to get healthy? Something to ask yourself. And um, I would say that, like, 98% of my supplement regimen is Young Living. I have one turmeric supplement for my chiropractor uh, guy. And everything else I have is Young Living. <laughs> And um, I use a lot of Young Living supplements, and we're going to get into those in just a little bit. Don't panic. I have a full product list. I'm having to go over my beauty regimen and all of that, but I had to let you know these things like drinking water and eating clean um, and changing your pillowcase and all that kind of stuff first. So um, <clears throat> overusing product, using the wrong product are other common problems uh, that go with your skin. So if you are buying, for instance... When I started trying to go clean, before I knew about Young Living, I was going to the health food store and I was spending a fair, probably more than I spend on some of Young Living's products to buy these like top of the line things at the health food store. And I started with the not top of the line things at the health food store. And I don't know what oils they use in those. Some of those things are very expensive, but their base oils are so heavy that they clog your skin. And um, I was like, wow, I wanted to go chemical free. And so I, I tried to do this, but these things were just weighing down my skin and just oily and greasy and it wasn't good. Um, and then finally I was like, well, I'm just going to do coconut oil then. Do not do that. Coconut oil is like so fatty and heavy that it doesn't absorb into your skin. It just kind of sits on top of your skin. It's nice when you're real crispy out of the ocean or something, but honestly, it doesn't really absorb very well in your skin, that, that coconut oil that you cook with. Um, so I know a lot of people are, at least here on Maui, a lot of women are going natural and they want to be, oh, you know, supernatural. And I'm like, that's great, but like that doesn't really do your skin <laughs> Please get something better. So um, that being said, um, you probably don't need to use as much. Uh, oh, the cleansing oil is so good. Yes. Um, bless you, Daisy. You might be using too much product. You might be using the wrong product. You might be using too little if you're still having skin problems. Um, there. You okay, boo? The other thing that can happen with natural oils in products at um, places like the health food store or whatever is that the oils can go bad. So say they have sunflower oil or safflower or almond or whatever in their formulation. And if it's not preserved naturally properly, you okay there, baby? Sorry, my dog's having a, some sort of weird breathing problem. Um, if they're not preserved well, uh, then they can go rancid. And now you're putting rancid oils on your face thinking that it's good for your skin and it's, it's just not. So... Um, Making sure that your product is fresh, making sure that it's clean, making sure that it doesn't have toxins or fillers in it, um, and making sure it's free of synthetic fragrance if it's going on, in, or around your body. Water.
All right. <clears throat> Products I use and love from Young Living for skincare. Supplement edition. Number one thing is Life9 Probiotic. If your gut is not in working order, your skin will not look good. And I did skip something I meant to say earlier, and that was bone broth. I am a big fan of homemade bone broth. I make my own venison bone broth from local uh, deer bones. And you don't need to use deer bones. You can use chicken feet or beef bones. And you can get them from your or uh, Whole Foods butcher department. If you don't know somebody who um, has animal bones, you can also, of course, make it from ducks and pigs and everything else. Um, if you have a farm or you know somebody who has access to those lamb bones, um, also make really nice broth. But I'm a venison girl. That's my way. And I'm grateful to have it and I'm grateful to use it. And the collagen that's in the bone broth is so good for your skin and your nails and your joints and everything else in your gut. And um, it really helps to heal your gut when you have it every morning. Um, I'm not a fan of the store-bought broths or the powdered broths. I would use it if I had to, but they're not yummy. They don't have all the other things in it. And so I'm just a huge fan. Hi, James. Be sure to, uh, thanks for being here. And be sure to check out the first part of the video you might have missed. Later, I'm talking about bone broth and the importance of it for our gut health and how gut health is actually the number one thing that contributes to that inner glow that helps your skin look amazing. So we're on supplements. I already talked about um, free things that you can do to eliminate and reduce and include in your life practices that you might be able to change that would help increase um, the luster of your skin. And now we're on supplements. So Life9 Probiotic, I take every night before bed and I suggest that everybody, I, I suggest that everybody take Life9 Probiotic before bed because getting your gut right is the first step to having glowing skin. Essential Zymes. Essential Zymes and Essential Zymes 4 are our um, enzymes, Young Living's enzymes. Ow for um, helping digest your food. So if you have um, any kind of compromised gut issue, um, I am still working with IBS, um, irritable bowel syndrome. I've had it most of my life and I have not figured it out yet because um, I've been through a lot and that's okay and I'm working on it. And um, knowing that I have digestive enzymes to help me digest things like say the turkey sandwich I ate earlier, which I don't normally eat, but I did. and. I was really glad to have those enzymes because it helps to break down those foods that may not be organic or that may not be, um, you know, something that you like my body's not like, wow, meat, that's that's hard to digest like today or a broccoli or a bean or something um, or sugar or dairy or anything like that. So um, I feel like a lot of people overlook the importance of digestive enzymes when they're looking at their digestive health. Um, and we're starting with digestive health for good skin. So your gut has to be in balance. You have to be eliminating properly. If you're not um, going to the bathroom poops on a regular basis and well, then there means there's an imbalance in your gut and that's an issue. And that also probably means that you're not getting your toxins out of your body and that could be reflected in the health of your skin. So making sure that you are going to the bathroom is the number one priority. So um, Life9 Probiotic and Essential Zymes 4 are my two top ones there. Sulfur Zyme Powder is something else that I take with um, in my Ningxia Red juice. And um, I'm a big fan of Ningxia Red and Sulfur Zyme. I've been drinking it for five years and I feel like it nourishes my hair, skin, cells, joints, um, gives me energy, gives me clarity, um, helps my gut, um, helps me to not drink other things and use other things that would be damaging like sugar and stimulating things, um, beverages that would be non-healthy to have. Um, so I am a big fan of those because again, gut health and cellular nutrition. I think that um, I absolutely would say that Ningxia Red has a part in my glow because <laughs> Ningxia Red helps to, to supplement my whole body. And um, the sulfur zyme with the MSM powder that's in there um, is also really, really, really good for your skin. So um, that's sort of a beauty secret too, um, is the sulfur zyme powder in the red drink. Okay, another product that Young Living makes that I'm a big fan of and that I use most of the time is the Inner Beauty Collagen Powder. Um, I ran out, so I don't have the jar here to show you. You're a good girl, Daisy. Um, I don't have the jar here to show you because it's on the way in my loyalty order, but the Inner Beauty Collagen Powder um, dissolves in water. Um, it doesn't dissolve well with ice cubes, I will tell you that. But other than ice cubes in your glass, because it kind of sticks to the ice cubes, other than the ice cubes, the sulfurzyme, I mean the um, 
Inner Beauty Collagen Powder can be put into water, juice, Ningxia Red, red drink, uh, coffee, matcha, chai, anything that you drink. Um, you can put your collagen powder into and it will just dissolve and it adds like a tiny little bit of creaminess like to coffee drinks but I've never noticed that it didn't make my red drink creamy it's just like it's in there and you don't really know that it's in there and that's great we love that so this is the um the type of collagen that is specifically for skin so when you drink bone broth um you're getting a broad spectrum of collagens but you're getting more of the collagen uh that's really good for your um joints and when you're taking the beauty collagen from Young Living that's more targeted toward your health of your skin so not as much with uh, joint health okay so life nine essential zymes four sulfur zyme powder ningxia red inner beauty collagen and detox zyme are the skin supplements that i'm going to suggest detox zyme is something that i take almost every night for a long time and I heard Gary Young once say in a talk that everyone could do with taking a small handful of the detox zyme every night. <laughs> um, I also know from experience, and after I heard this uh, from somebody somewhere at convention, uh, that detox zyme was good for nightmares. It works. If there's crap stuck in your body, you're going to have bad dreams. So if you're not eliminating properly, going back to that, and you've got toxins floating around in your bloodstream because you're eating poorly or you've got products that you're putting on yourself that are toxic, excuse me, then a good way to start getting that out is to make sure that you have um, detox zyme every night with your Life9 probiotic, and that will help to cleanse things out of your body while you sleep. Then you go to the bathroom in the morning and you're on track to a great glowy day. Um, if you need more digestive system support, then I would look to Comfortone. Uh, which is something you can take daily in a capsule, one to three times. I use that once a day, sometimes twice. And then um, ICP or ICP daily are our fiber supplements that you can take to help get a deeper cleanse out and like really get your um, system moving. So, and then we have another one called digest and cleanse, <laughs> which is pretty good too. It's a little spicy in the belly, but, um, and then there's digize oil that you can use to help your digestion also. So I know it's a lot of information, uh, but we're going to move on the oils that I use for my skincare because this is a class and I'm just I'm, I'm sharing all the information with you so let me know if you're still with me drop me a blue heart if uh, you've made it this far and we are going to move on to oils my favorite skin oils there's only a few how I use them and then I'd love it if you would let me let me know below if there's another supplement that you use with a skin care and result in mind that I didn't mention, or if you know something that I don't know about supplementation that we carry that helps with skin care, I would love to know below. So just drop it in the comments and let me know what you use supplement wise to support your skin health. If I did not mention that yet. Um, and so also, I don't know, I thought I said switch your lotion but that's obvious, right? Okay. So oils that we use, how I use them. Number one, lavender. So lavender is in most of our skincare products already. Um, I'm going to get to my skincare products next, but we're talking about oils first. Um, lavender is the number one oil that I go to if I have a blemish of any kind, um, a cut, a scrape, a nick, a pimple, anything. There's lavender. Um, I use lavender on my nose rings. Just plain and neat like that. Oh, thanks for the blue hearts, guys. I can't tell how many people are here, so I appreciate that. Thanks, Ava. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Ava. Um, lavender is just great. Thank you, Sharon. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so lavender is just great for all the reasons, and we know that it's safe to put on our face undiluted, even for children. So lavender is the number one oil that I go to for all blemishes, all issues, and I know that it's in all skin, all of our skincare products have lavender in them, um, and it smells amazing. Um, tea tree is another oil that a lot of people commonly use when they have a um, skincare blemish, like a pimple or, um, you know, something coming up. Um, I want to caution that. And I'm a big fan of using oils directly. I want to caution you because tea tree is very drying. So a lot of people, if they start to get an infection in an ear infection or um, earring infection or a nose and ring infection, they'll start putting tea tree oil directly on it. That's okay for like one or two days, and then it's going to start drying it out really badly. 
So um, if you have like some kind of infection thing going on, I recommend actually diluting it one to one with some fractionated coconut oil, making a little dropper bottle or something and using that. Um, or just maybe using it neat on like the first day, but then switching to lavender um, and diluting with coconut oil if you can, because um, it's harsh. Even the lavender, um, if you have like a really like open kind of irritated area, even the lavender can actually feel a little irritating sometimes. So you have to trust yourself and know yourself. Like when is it good to use it um, undiluted and when not, that's totally you. Um, I like to put a dropper bottle, um, dropper on top of my tea tree because when I want tea tree, I need it to go to a certain spot, you know, like um, I need it on this toenail or I need it on this, you know, this pimple or I just need one drop. And sometimes like doing the bottle thing with the tea tree, like three or four drops can come out and it's going down your hand and you're just like, I needed one drop. So anyway, this is my tip for you is to put a, um, to put a thingy on top of your tea tree. My very favorite skin oil, you know it frankincense i love frankincense a lot of people make a frankincense roller um i still haven't ever gotten around to it but every day i do drop a drop, drop a drop or two on my forehead and i literally just rub it around in here and i'm like praising god in my head and i'm thinking about how divinely intelligent i am and how blessed and i'm just like opening up my brain and i'm feeling connected with my great spirit and my higher intelligence at the same time as I'm erasing wrinkles. So frankincense and getting smarter. So frankincense really is um, a miraculous oil. And I will tell you that I use a lot of it. I spend my points on it. Not every month, probably every other month. I go through a bottle of frankincense. And um, I use it for a lot of different things. I take it internally on my tongue. I put it in my water. Um, I make mist with it. I diffuse it. Um, I put it down my spine. I put it <laughs> like all over. But frankincense is one of those oils that's just so incredibly good for your skin. They've been using it since ancient times to um, create a youthful appearance. So where did my little special bottle of... Huh. I hope it didn't. I had something special, special to show you. And um, it has disappeared, which has me a little bit worried. But that's okay because it could be messy. Move on to myrrh because this is, I was going to show you how I have my frankincense and my myrrh in a special little bottle. Is that it right there? One second, please. Nope. I have misplaced it. All right. So here's a tip. Myrrh oil is very sticky. When you first open your myrrh bottle, it's liquid. But within like a week, it's getting thick. And within like two weeks, three weeks, it's much thicker. And then within the shortest amount of time, you're like, holy Moses, my myrrh oil is all stuck to the bottle and I can't get it out anymore. It's like recrystallized. So the way that I handle that is that um, I use as much myrrh as I can when I first open the bottle. For whatever reason I open it, I put it on my face every single day. Every single day. Drop, drop, drop. Three drops in the morning, three drops at night. Okay. Myrrh is a miracle. <laughs> It's a miracle face oil. And what I do is if I make blends or whatever, and as it starts to thicken, then I take a small, I get like a different, I take an empty one of these and I get a dropper or I have like, I happen to have a 10 mil one that I bought, a little 10 mil with a pipette. And I just put like half the bottle of myrrh in there and the same amount of frankincense and then some fractionated coconut oil. And I do this. And so I have this special little vial that I was looking around for that's just frankincense oil, myrrh oil, and a little bit of, um, and I wouldn't, I don't like to use the V6 for my face personally. I prefer just the fractionated coconut oil. Um, and so I put that in there and it's still, it's all crusty. It's got like myrrh stuff, like stuck everywhere. But that myrrh is liquid gold. It's really, really good for your skin. Um, back in, I don't know how long ago, but in more ancient times in Egypt, the women used to wrap um, their hair up and put alligator fat and chunks of myrrh in their hair. And then the hot sun would melt the, oh, it was alligator or crocodile fat that had all the myrrh and it would come down their head and on their face and they would just rub it in and it would like preserve their beauty um, and Wow, right? So myrrh has been used for a long time for beauty. You just need to know how to handle your bottles so you don't waste it. If you have any other questions about these things, again, throw them in the comments and I'll get to them 
after the class. Copaiba. Copaiba is, um, I'm out of it. I need to get more. That oil is absolute heaven. Um, it's the most gentle oil that you can use for a skin healing thing, and it's safe completely to put all over your skin. Um, it's even more gentle than lavender, but it doesn't have that sort of like antiseptic quality that the lavender does um, or the tea tree does, but Copaiba is one that I definitely include in um, all of my skincare serums or anything that I'm making and that I've been known to just throw directly on my face or onto a wound or whatever. Um, so Copaiba is definitely another skin oil. Um, there are many of um, our essential oils that Young Living offers that have skincare benefits. So just because you don't have those oils doesn't mean that you can't use others like Alami or Carrot Seed. Um, Manuka. There are so many of our oils that have skincare benefits. It's really easy to make your own uh, DIY serum just by getting um, a base oil that you like, a recipe that you like, and then adding in your own stuff. Um, there's like an, a million serum recipes and it is really fun to make your own serum. So um, that's something that I love doing too. And But those four oils, tea tree, lavender, copaiba, five, frankincense and myrrh are my top skin oils. And also um, having a live aloe vera plant is a really smart thing to do for your skin because if you get any kind of burn or any kind of big cut, just put the aloe vera right directly on there. And that goes for your skin too. Plus you can just take the aloe vera leaf, slit it open, put it all over your face and it's like a special hydrating facial and you didn't even need to like do anything else. You don't have to put anything else in it, just the aloe and it will be so good for your face. Um, so that's that. Now, we are moving on to, oh my gosh, holy moly, a lot of information here. Also, my phone doesn't show what time it is, so I don't know how long I've been talking, but we're going to get through this. Okay, I've made a note here on how many hundreds of dollars I wasted at, uh, like, high-end Macy's and stuff at the skincare counters, and then on these other companies, uh, I won't mention names, but other companies that promote skincare um, regimens. I remember buying into those and spending hundreds of dollars and thinking that I was doing something good for my skin. Even some celebrity, Cindy Crawford or something, I did at one point and I was like, I'm using this special system. And it was like aging my skin. Thank you, James. I really appreciate you. Okay, I'm right on track then. Um, I'm going for an hour or so because um, it's a lot of information. But um, if you are using crap stuff on your skin, that is aging your skin. So if it's just like, it, it's mind blowing how brainwashed that our society is to use oil like of Olay, oil of Olay is, is just, it's super toxic, just straight up. All that drugstore stuff is toxic. It's toxic. There's stuff in it that's toxic. It's aging your skin. The makeup is aging your skin. It's got all these things in it that age your skin. So, um, yeah. <laughs> all right. On to what I actually use for my face. And this is one of my favorite hacks in the catalog. This is the charcoal bar soap, which we got for free a couple months ago. And what I do with the charcoal bar soap is I cut a slice off that's, you know, like an eighth of an inch or so, just like a little wedge. And I keep that in the shower. And I use that on my face um, almost every day in the morning, but not always. Usually, but not always. I do rotate stuff. So you're going to have to make up your own regimen. But if you were only going to use one thing, you could probably get away with just using this, James. I'm thinking of you. Um, it's great for travel, too, because you can just cut off a slice and put it in a very, very small bag, and you don't have to carry anything liquid. And actually, you can use this. This is body soap, too. I mean, it doesn't say that it's, does it say that it's for your face. Deep cleansing bar for face and body. Okay, so you can use this for your skin. Um anywhere else you know so and i've done it on trips you just take a slice i um, mean you have to take the whole thing just take a slice and it's very economical <laughs> and very cleansing to your face um so i really like the charcoal bar soap and it's easy to travel with um the other cleanser that i prefer um used to be and i'm showing you the old packaging in case you have been a customer for a while and you became a fan of the orange blossom facial wash if you're um, a fan of that you can know that the new version is called Balance. Um, the Balance Facial Wash is the same as the Orange Blossom face, Facial Wash. I just kept my Orange Blossom container because <laughs> I like it. Um, but there are three, I think, different or four facial washes that Young Living offers um, for different skin types and different purposes. If you need help determining which one of those you are, send me a message. I'll be happy to help you. Um, but I have most people I know love the Orange Blossom Facial Wash. It's gentle, but effective, um, smells amazing, and it does the job. So those are the two washes that I use for my face. 
along with once a week, I use the satin mint facial scrub. Not a necessity, totally a luxury. In my personal opinion, do we need to exfoliate our skin? Yes. Does it have to be with this face scrub? Not necessarily, but it's a really good one. And I remember when I first got it, I was like, oh, it's so small. Listen, kids, we even, I was raised to use way too much product. I was raised to use way too much shampoo, way too much face scrub, way too much of all that stuff. Shit lasts like a year. Excuse me. I said another bad word. I'm so sorry. I'm trying, Young Living. Um, but literally, you don't need but more than that on your face for it to spread all the way around and for you to get the benefits of the satin mint facial scrub. So I really like the satin mint facial scrub. Those are the three products that I use to cleanse my face. Um, and those are easy to take in small amounts too. So if you um, feel like you want a toner, what is a toner? Like why do people use a toner? Well, some people have bigger pores than others and it's nice to um, tone those pores down. It's sort of like a refinement thing. You don't have to do it, okay? If you're on a basic skincare budget or you're just like, for, you don't have the like wherewithal to use however many products or whatever, just get, you know, the, the cleanser, get a moisturizer and get going. Um, hi, Jody. Um, go ahead and do that. But if you want to take the next step to have a toner in between, um, it can help to refine your pores and even out your skin tone and also give you a little bit more hydration uh, before you put the, so that your actually your moisturizer gives you better benefits. So you can live without a toner, but toners are nice. Young Living has a toner called Balance, which I really, really like. And you can also uh, use uh, the sandalwood hydrosol from the, uh, the Big Island. What's it called? Royal Hawaiian sandalwood. <laughs> hydrosol can be used as a facial toner. If you don't like that fragrance or you'd like to make your own, then I recommend getting your own little spray bottle from Amazon or the store. Uh, glass, not plastic, and if you can. And um, put in there some uh, clean... Hi, Wendy. Thank you for being here. Uh, clean filtered water. If you know somebody with a Kanga machine or you have one or you know how to get like the pH water that's called beauty water. Um, yes. Yes, Sharon. Oh, the bamboo charcoal soap changed my life uh, last time I traveled. Having that wedge of bamboo charcoal soap was like all I really needed because it was only a five day trip. And I was, you know, I missed my char my other soap. But at the same time, I was fine for five days with the bamboo, bamboo soap uh, bar. So, um. Whatever I was just saying about the toner, you can make your own hydro, um, not hydrosol, but you can make your own like lavender spray or rose spray, which are both really good for your face. Heck, you could put copaiba, frankincense, and lavender, two drops of each or 10 drops of each or whatever you want to do into a mister bottle with pure clean water, not tap water. And um, the better water, the better. Um, but put that in there. You have a facial mist. You make your own, okay? It costs pennies on the dollar. So um, if you don't want to get Young Living's toners, and, uh, or if you don't want the hydrosol, you can make your own, a few drops of lavender and some water, or a drop of rose, a few drops of rose, um, and have your own rose water. Okay, so on to what happens after you tone your face and it's wet and it's, it's drying, okay? So now I have to say how much I love, out of everything in the entire catalog, my very favorite product is the Art Renewal Serum. Um, I've used my points to get this every time because it's a little bit of a more expansive, higher-end product. Um, I think it's like the best thing in the catalog, honestly, and every woman should treat themselves to this. You need one juicy little drop, and you know what? This is empty. <laughs> I just kept it because I love it so much. <laughs> I need to get more. Hi, Kelowna. Thanks for being here. Also, if you're just coming in now um, at the 35 or 40 minute mark, there's a whole bunch of information and um, a good like five minutes of dancing at the beginning uh, to, to rev you up. So definitely go back to check out what you might have missed. But the Art Renewal Serum is something every woman should treat themselves to or ask for Christmas or your birthday or whatever, because this stuff is absolute the most heavenly, luxurious thing you've ever had on your face ever. And I think it really makes a difference. It's not a substitute for a, um, hi Marsha, it's not a substitute, thanks Wendy, hi Kelowna, it's not a substitute for a moisturizer, but it certainly brings in uh, more of a glow, and uh, right alongside that is the CBD Rose Beauty Boost, which I'm also out of, but when I have them both, I alternate them, I do the Beauty Boost one day, and then the, um, 
renewal serum the next day. Um, so, hi! So, I really love the CBD Beauty Boost almost as much as I love the renewal serum. And I think they both give beautiful, wonderful upgrades to any facial care regimen. I think they're meant for all skin types, calming inflammation, increasing glow. But I've been out of both for over a month, and this is what I still look like. So, that's why the supplements and everything else are so important, too. Oh, I love the Art Renewal Sim. Yeah, it's my very, it, it's top of the line for me. That and, and the Rose Beauty Booster, top of the line. Now, if you don't want to invest in one of those and you want to make your own, like I said, just go in the search bar up here in Spruce Society and type in DIY Face Serum or Face Serum or Glow Serum. I know we have tons of recipes in here um, from experienced people who have done it. So um, lots of recipes. You can make your own and just use a couple drops of that after your toner, before your moisturizer. And this is a great time to get out that gua sha stone that I mentioned at the beginning. And while your face is like, oh, Beauty Boost is so epic. <laughs> I miss it. Um, while your face is still moist with all of that, or even after your moisturizer is when you can do your few minutes of gua sha also. Um, so let's talk moisturizers. So just like there are different cleansers for different face types, different skin types, there are different moisturizers that Young Living offers for all different levels of moisturizing. So um, I kind of, I'm, I'm an artist and I like to have a palette of things. <laughs> and I'm sort of the same with my skincare products. I like to have a light moisturizer for if I only need a little, and I like to have a heavy moisturizer for if I need more. Uh, the Art Light Moisturizer is a wonderful moisturizer if you have oily skin, um, if you have like plumper, more youthful, more hydrated, more collagen filled skin, um, is the, you know, that's really the one for you. Um, I love the art intensive moisturizer, but I'm going to show you right now my favorite young living skincare hack product. Hack. It's this, it's the sandalwood moisture cream. This is the biggest jar. I don't think anything else is this big cause this is four ounces. I think the other ones are all 3.4. It is, mine, mine looks funny, okay, because I added myrrh oil <laughs> into mine. My myrrh, remember I was telling you what to do with your myrrh oil before it hardens up? Well, my myrrh oil was starting to get hardened, and so I got it out of there, and I got it in here, and I mixed it in, and I figured, well, you know, it's just going to help. So the thing about this is that um, price point-wise and thickness-wise, like this is, I feel it's the best deal in the catalog for moisturizer. Um, it's very thick. So if you have, so I have dry skin uh, now that I'm postmenopausal. so more moisture is better for me. But if you're like very youthful or if you have very oily skin, you might, this may not be for you unless you want a thicker night cream um, or the most amazing hand and chest cream that you've ever had in your life, which is what I, um, I also want to recommend this for. So you really only need, you know, like you don't need that much when your face is wet you know, especially, and if you've just put on a serum um, or the Beauty Boost, you don't need a lot. But this, this one is the thing. This is the thing. This is just the best. That's all I have to say. I don't know how else to say it. You can add other oils to this if you want. Um, <laughs> yeah, I need all the moisture too. And so here's my most recent favorite hack about this. Um, besides, so also, I highly recommend everybody to always be moisturizing this area of your body and this area of your body if you want to continue looking youthful um these areas also need to be moisturized and this is in my opinion the best moisturizer to do that with another thing that i've been using this for is hand cream um, i keep meaning to make my own hand cream um but I, I haven't um and so i have to say um i know we have the yes the decolletage i know we have the um coconut lime body butter which is delicious um, but I have found that this, um, at nighttime, I've been putting just a tiny dab of this on my hands and they love it. So if you have, um, older hands, if you have mature hands, if you have, um, you're worrying about the creping on your hands, use this. And if you're young, use it anyway, and then you'll have younger looking hands longer. Now I'll take this opportunity real quick to go back and mention a product that I forgot to mention that I feel is one of the another really big hack thanks Kelowna another really big hack in the catalog and that is the Mira cleansing oil now I'm out of this oil also but I gotta say for two full years I used Mira cleansing oil as my serum instead of any other serum I didn't DIY I didn't CBD beauty boost I didn't have the renewal serum I used Mira cleansing oil as a serum this is what my face looks like okay 
It's the best makeup remover. It also comes in a four ounce bottle. It's another total product catalog hack because you get so much in the bottle and you only use a few drops a day. And that, if you want an economical serum, go buy Mira Cleansing Oil and use it as a serum. You'll thank me later. And from one of my um, customers, I'll also tell you that the Mira Cleansing Oil is an excellent solution for thin, creping skin um, on the hands as well. I have two clients that are um, over 60, uh, two customers, friends that are over 60 that have successfully begun to reverse the creping on their hands with the um, cleansing oil. It's great for taking everything off. It's the best makeup remover I've ever used in my life. And you can use it as a base to make a deeper facial serum. So say you want to take the Mira cleansing oil, put an ounce of it in a dropper bottle, and add in blue tansy and rose or whatever. You know what? I forgot to share my other oil hack. I got to go back. Hawaiian sandalwood and sacred sandalwood in a roller. This is now, this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a, Oh, good to know. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, the cleansing oil is a real winner. It's a real secret in the catalog, just like the sandalwood moisture cream. Now, this is, some people might think this is a little bougie, but I, I'm a queen, you're a queen, and you're worth it. You're worth it. I have a 10 mil roller in which I put one 5 mil roller of Royal Hawaiian sandalwood and one, oh, the deep spectra. Oh, my God. Oh, I would love to have that. Oh, the frankincense deep spectra. Oh, my goodness. So this is undiluted Royal Hawaiian sandalwood and sacred sandalwood in a crystal roller with a crystal ball. We don't ever want to lose this one because <laughs> we know how much that's worth. But I'm telling you, this, what I'm doing right now, is not only really good for your skin, but it's also incredibly good for your brain and your mood and meditation and peace and connection and like clarity and calm and I don't know about you but it, I just love sandalwood <sighs> that's another thing I randomly do throughout the day to take care of my skin does it feel a little dry maybe I'll just grab my sandalwood roll and now I'm looking extra oily because I <laughs> for showing you all these things all right sandalwood moisture cream or Mira cleansing oil um, again, this is another product that travels well because you can transfer it into a smaller container. Very, very good for dry skin on the airplane or after the airplane also, or if you live somewhere like I do, which is very moist. I live in Hawaii and then I go to somewhere like Utah for convention and my skin's like, help! Um, this is an amazing thing for it. Um, so, now, the clay mask. I know you're wondering, do I use our clay, charcoal clay mask? Yes, I do. And um, I want to share what I've learned about this charcoal mask with you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, so good. I love to hear all the different beauty rituals and things. <laughs> Excuse me. I think they're important for us. Charcoal mask, um, a great thing to use once a week. I use it a couple times a week on my nose. These are the areas where my pores are big. Um, right there, there, and there. And so I just put it like a spot treatment a few times a week and wipe it off. Um, this can be very drying if you leave it on too long, um, and it can kind of freak your skin out a little bit. Some people, I've noticed, um, have a little bit of a response to, like, the, the maybe the peppermint that's in it, and they get a little red and a little itchy. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. It's from the inside out. I'm telling you. It's all these, all these, all these tips. It's not just one thing, but um, I do love this product. I think it's great, and I recommend it. Um, but just don't overuse it, and make sure to moisturize well afterwards. Um, really good for spot treatments, too. If you have, like, a something coming up, that clay mask is a really good spot treatment. Okay, um, two things that are really important for your skin. Care. Rose ointment. Rose ointment, not just good for hemorrhoids. Also good for, like, cuticles, um, any at your elbow if it's dry, or basically anything. Um, your lips, you can put on your lips, you can put it like on a, you know, if you need a little bit of extra, if it's like you have a dry flaky patch for some reason, like rose ointment is the way to go. Um, yes. Oh, so good. Especially for, um, especially if you have more oily skin, the charcoal mask is so, so good. So I am going to let you guys in on one more secret from our product catalog here. And that's that um, rose ointment is an excellent tattoo ointment. So these are new tattoos, these stars on my hand. They're about a week old, and technically they haven't peeled yet, 
but they're going to, um, and they're very tiny, obviously, um, and I am a huge, huge fan of using the rose ointment uh, during the more delicate phase um, of your tattoo healing. And this is my other secret skin warrior from the catalog. Yep, it's animal skin, animal sense ointment. So not only is, okay, so here's the difference between these two, besides the price and the size, okay? This has rose and like fancy things in it for your face, and it's created for your face. This does not have rose and fancy things in it for your face. It's created for your animals and their nicks and cuts. So it has more things that are going to help heal skin problems and protect against um, skin issues. So I don't recommend necessarily putting this on your face, but we're not just talking about face. We're talking about all over skincare. So my secret recipe tattoo healing balm from the beginning to the end is half animal sense ointment and half rose ointment. And you just mix it up with your utensil and put it in a little tin. And that's what I use instead of Aquaphor and anything else that's petroleum based for healing my tattoos. So that's one of my favorite things to share. And then having this on hand, even if you don't have animals, um, honestly, the, the economical version of it, this is so economical. This is huge. It's 6.3 ounces of um, salve for all of your wounds and everything. So um, I love our um, salves and our ointment. Oh, sorry, Daisy. I love our sand uh, salves and ointments for tattoos. And then as far as body moisturizing, I don't know if you know this, but we actually have, um, did I not talk about this? Scrubs and stuff. Now we're coming up. Body oil chose, okay, we gotta keep going here. We got makeup. I'm just gonna touch on this real quick. Um, Again, toxins in your makeup are going to aid you. So I know we no longer really have our savvy minerals, but um, if we have savvy minerals, we can keep using it. And I know Melissa Pepping is releasing a new line of makeup. So I'm very excited about that. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about that or not, or if that's wrong, but I'm excited about it. And um, I would like to just be able to continue to buy from a company that I felt was truly clean. Um, all right, most important, begin reducing inflammatories, gluten, dairy, and sugar. Begin swapping and adding supplements as you're cleaning up your diet. Check your hygiene and increase your water. That's sort of a summary of everything we've talked about so far. That would be the beginning thing that you could do if you were ready to embark on a deeper level of skincare journey. Then I would, I would suggest that you add Life9 Probiotic, Sulfurzyme Powder in the Ningxia Red like we talked about, Essential Zymes 4 to help digest your foods, Inner Beauty Collagen to help with the elasticity of your skin, and detox zyme enzymes at night along with your Life9 Pro probiotic to help move things out of your body and any other supplements that you need for helping you have a regular movement. Things to swap, going back over that real quick, your laundry soap is a big one, man, because you're like sleeping on that, you're drying your face with that. Holy schmoly's, man, once you realize the laundry soap thing, you'll realize the laundry soap thing. So um, split that laundry soap in three, boost it up, and get those toxic things out of your laundry life. No dryer sheets and all that good stuff so that you clothes that you're wearing are not giving you contact dermatitis, which means rash from your stuff. Um, make sure that your um, things that you're cleaning with, swap out your face cleanser, swap out your moisturizer, swap out your hand soaps, get thieves, get lavender, lemon, whatever we've got, get it, get rid of that other crap, excuse me, body wash and lotion. DIY scrubs are so easy. That's another thing. That's what I was just about to talk about was scrub, skin scrubs. You can make them out of soap. soap. You can make them out of salt. You can make them out of sugar. You can use coffee grounds. You can use herbs. There's so many different scrubs. Again, um, type in the search bar here in Spruce Society, DIY body scrub or just body scrub, and I'm sure something will come up. Literally just get some salt in a mason jar, put the salt in there. Um, if you can get one of our massage oils, like the cell light oil helps to reduce cellulite and increase circulation on your skin, that's a great one. I love the sensation body oil. Um, I know there's other body oils that we also have, massage oils, and you pour it in over the salt and the sugar or salt or sugar or coffee grounds or whatever you got in there, and you sort of mix it up and you just get that on there and you do your thing, and it's so good for you. Um, also, we have amazing lotions. I'm a big fan of the Sensation Lotion and a big fan of the Lavender Lotion. I have a bottle of both in my bathroom, and that's what I use on the bottom part of my body, except at night I use Sensation Massage Oil. I do. I stand in my bedroom and I just go, 
and I squirt it on there and I just like put it all over and I go to bed like that. Obviously not overly oily, but like nicely. Very nice. So, um, okay. What are you? Shampoo and conditioner. You also need to swap out because you don't want all that chemicals as much near, near your face. Um, sunscreen also. All right. My regimen and then we're done. Friends, you have been so patient to listen to all this information. So face care in the AM every day in the shower or otherwise. I wash my face. I'm either using the charcoal bar soap or liquid cleanser or the scrub. And sometimes I'll use one of the cleansers and then the scrub. I don't scrub every day. The scrubs once a week, once a week. Toner. Sometimes I skip it. Um, I know I'm a little bit, I guess I'm going to say I'm a little bit blessed, but I've also worked hard to get my skin to this point. Um, but I don't, it, it, I can skip it or I can use it. Um, but I really enjoy spraying rose water on my face and hydrosols on my face. So why not? Plus it gives you that extra moment to get out your moisturizer where you can use your serum of choice, like the renewal serum or the CBD beauty boost or your pre-made DIY. Um, then you grab your moisturizer and you can, oh, you know what else? The dry skin serum oil is really nice too. Um, it's not really a serum. It says dry skin serum, dry skin serum, I think, but it's, um, a really nice blend of facial care oils, uh, one of my best friends uses that a lot and that's it. You can add, if you want to add lavender in between at any point or like Sharon was saying, she puts a drop of sandalwood on her hand and then the moisturizer on her hand and then puts that on. That's another way to add in uh, oils into your regimen also. So, or frankincense adding that on. Moisturize up, make sure to include your neck and your decolletage every single time. Um, you'll thank me 10 years from now. Your body oil or choice of lotions, body butters. We have the coconut lime body butter. And now I think there's a chai body butter as well or a cozy chai or something like that body butter. Um, and then at night, I don't always wash my face. I don't. I don't always wash my face. But if I've worn makeup, like if I was to wear liquid makeup, I would absolutely wash my face. Um, if I've gone out to the beach, if I've hugged a lot of people... You know, I definitely, if I went out to a restaurant, like I definitely, I mean, almost always wash my face at night. Some nights, maybe I just stayed at home all day and they didn't do very much. And I like look at my face and I'm like, meh, doesn't even need any moisturizer. Um, but you know, so not every day is exactly the same, but if I was to wash my face a second time, I would use the same thing that I did in the morning, the char charcoal bamboo soap or the, uh, facial wash. And then I would just use my moisturizer and, and get on with it. Um, Stop using coconut oil on your face. I already said that. And then the last piece of advice I have for you to discover ageless beauty through Young Living is to just keep franking your face. Just keep putting that frankincense on your face. That is my um, extra, extra, extra beauty secret. And I think that that's all the information that I have to share with you today. That was four big pages of notes and probably an hour of your time. So I hope that you learned something new today. And I would love to hear from you down below um, what you learned today that you're going to start using, what a new product was that you hadn't heard of before that you'd like to try. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I showed or shared about. Um, what else? Um, that's about it. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me and let me know um, what other class you'd like me to do. Anything else you'd like to hear me talk about, um, I'd be happy to share about it and I hope you have a beautiful day. And oh, one last thing. I wanted to show you this. If you're a uh, OG Young Living, you're welcome, Jennifer. Yay. Welcome. If you're OG Young Living person from a few years ago, you'll recognize these little charms um, are from the different farms from our advent calendar. And I made this charm necklace and I just wanted to share that with uh, those of you who have these charms from back from we had that advent calendar then you can make a necklace like this for yourself too just grab a, a gold chain and just put them all on there and it's real fun so anyway thank you so much aloha and have a beautiful day